Hello. So in the last session we discussed about springs connected in series and parallel and also we discussed about mathematical modeling or how to draw mathematical modeling of any given structure. Now in this session we will be discussing about numericals pertaining to uh, springs that is series and parallel connections and also our FBD that is uh, referee body diagrams pertaining to our system that we discussed earlier that was free undamped SGF system. Okay? So moving across then we will be discussing our first numerical. The question here is a weight of 15 Newton is vertically suspended by a spring of stiffness k equal to 2 Newton per m. This is the spring stiffness that is given in the question. We are asked to determine the natural frequency of free vibration of the weight. That means that is free vibration, there is no damping constant or damping unit being prescribed in, this is in the question itself. Therefore, it is a sum of free undamped condition. Now, in the GT examination, you might not be knowing how to identify which four conditions or which out of four conditions you will be using in that particular numerical problem. So, there are total four cases we will be discussing. First that we already discussed was free undamped condition. Second we will be discussing free damped. Third will be force undamped and force damped. So basically there are two major criteria that you need to look upon. First is force that is either the force is free of vibration or there is force vibration. Clear? And the second thing is damping. That is, if it is given in the question that there is any amount of damping present or there is no amount of damping being present, 5% yeah? damping, 10% damping or the value of damping, if it is given in the question itself, then that means it is a sum of damped units. Now you need to identify in the question that whether, whether it is a free vibration sum or a force vibration sum. So for here example it is given as uh, we find the natural frequency of the free vibration of the weight. Yeah? Either case it will be force will be given in the equation. So this is how you will be identifying which amount of equation we will be using in what stuff. Also it has been asked also derive the equation of motion for this particular sum. So this our overall our numerical will be divided into two part. First part will be finding the natural frequency that is small f. Small f will be equal to 1 upon 2 pi under root k by m. Clear? This will be finding and also will be deriving the equation of motion pertaining to it. So now as it is given in the question that k is equal to 2 Newton per mm. Every time we will be converting these values to be in the terms of Newton and meter. So as it is given 2 Newton per mm, converting it into Newton per meter, the answer comes out to be 2000. So the stiffness here will be 2000 Newton per meter. Now we need to find the value of mass. Why so? Because here weight is being given. The value of weight is always in Newton and kilonewton or something like that. Mass will be always in kg. So we will finding the value of mass. If mass was directly given in question, this step will, would not have come into picture. But at, as here it is given weight in the question, we will be finding the mass. So m will be equal to W by G, that is gravity. Gravity, we won't be taking 10, always we will be taking the value to be 9.81. So our m will be 15 upon 9.81 kg. Plus so this will be our value of mass. Now we will be focusing on our question. The question here is determine the natural frequency. So natural frequency, the equation is f equal to 1 upon 2 pi under root k by m. This we have already seen in the derivation part. So 1 upon 2 by under root k by m. k is the stiffness m in the mass. So stiffness was already given in the equation and we have calculated mass which was derived from this weight system. Clear? So solving it we are getting an answer 5.756. So the our answer that is natural uh, frequency here comes out to be 5.756 and unit of frequency will always be cycles per second or hertz. You can write any unit of this. Either you can mention it as cycles per second or you can mention 5.756 hertz. So this is our final answer pertaining to our first sum. Clear? So the 
the part one that is determine the nature of frequency of free vibration of weight is completed now we will be moving on to part two that is also derive the equation for motion now to derive the equation for motion we need to draw what is being given in the equation it is given that a weight of 50 newton is vertically suspended by a spring so the figure will be something like this it is vertically suspended so this will be a rigid surface will be, which will be of roof or ceiling this will be our mass or we can say the weight which is given 15 newton so this will be our weight it is vertically suspended by a spring so this will be our suspended part which will be connected by a spring having stiffness coefficient k clear so this will be our k and as it is uh, vertically suspended the displacement will be in vertical direction that is y clear now due to the presence of weight again due to the presence of weight there will be some motion in it that means the after applying weight w to the pen itself if we say that consider this uh, to be pen if we put 50 newton weight in it then this k that is spring it will be vertically displaced at somewhat amount clear so due to itself weight the displacement will be considering it to be yst yst will be generally due to its self weight that is w that we have incorporated here now this will be the a free body diagram of it that our total force will be w this is the weight force which will be external force here 15 kilonewton now 15 newton will become the external force clear so this will be our f of t which will be w and there is no damping given here so the opposing forces will be two types that is inertia force and stiffness force so inertia force will be m the displacement is given by y so it will be m by double dot and this will be our value of k k y but keep in mind we need to find this total y clear so this value was y this was the initial displacement after placing the weight so the total displacement will be y st plus y so this will be the figure that will be dealing upon as you can see here due to the weight w the spring will have vertical deflection that will be given by yst and due to that the yst value will always be equal to weight upon k that is w upon k clear so now applying dlm's principle on it as we know that w is in the opposite direction other two loads are the opposite direction so we can write it as m by double dot plus k into yst plus y equal to w or if we take w on the opposing side it will be minus w equal to 0 so from this equation we will be finding the equation of motion equation of motion is always equal to this cases that is inertia force plus damping force plus stiffness force equal to the total load this was given by d l Lambert, and from that we will be finding always the equation of motion so as we can say that this is the equation that we derived now here mass mass will be equal to w by g so here it will be w upon g and yst that we just saw was w by k so yst will be substituting by w by k so in this case if we multiply in k inside the bracket it comes out to be w upon g y double dot plus this k and k will be cancelled so w plus k y minus w the remaining portion will be w upon g y double dot plus k y clear this is the remaining portion and now if we multiply by g by w on both sides then this g by w that is w by g multiplied by g by w so these both will be cancelled out and the remaining portion will be y double dot here it will be g by w into k y equal to 0 clear and now substituting the value of w to be mg in this case so the weight will be equal to mass into gravity so it will be y double dot plus g into k that will be gk upon mg multiplied by y this g and g will be cancelled out so the remaining portion will be y double dot plus k by m into y equal to 0 now k by m as we all know omega equal to under root k by m this we have derived in the energy principle stuff so omega equal to under root k by m so squaring on both sides this square root will be get cancelled and here will be getting omega square so k by m can be written as omega square so our final answer will be y double dot plus omega square y equal to 0 
so this is our equation of motion it is asked also get an equation of motion so this will be our final equation of motion pertaining to this sum this is how we will be dealing with in our numerical part so moving on to our second sum the second sum today is determine natural frequency in side sway for the frame shown in figure take ei that is flexural rigidity equal to 13 into 10 raised to 12 newton into mm square this figure is given in the question itself it is a portal frame having two columns or two legs that is ab and cd with support a and d as fixed ab length is 2 meter and cd length is 3 meter and the weight in on the form of udl the weight is 15 to 10 raised to 6 newton clear here udl value is not given that is newton per meter or newton per mm is not given the entire weight is been given so there is no need to have the value of r span that is bc span is not required because already the total weight is been given here so now we will be starting as columns ab and cd are parallel thus the equivalent stiffness is given by k equivalency so the stiffness of this column plus stiffness of this column will be giving the total value that is k equivalency clear so k equivalency will be stiffness of this plus stiffness of this now if the stiffness is not given it will always be found out by the value of delta clear so for delta we have already seen in sa1 it and sa2 itself that for delta here the values will be 12 ei by l cube why so because of the fixed support in the fixed beam conditions also we have seen this same this phenomenon so whenever the support that is whenever the support is fixed the value of deflection will be 12 ei by l cube and again this will be 12 ei by l cube so 12 ei by l cube for column ab plus 12 ei by l cube for column cd now substituting the values here 12 ei was given 13 into 10 raised to 12 but keep in mind it is given in newton into mm square so first we need to uh, identify and to convert it into meter square so 13 into 10 is 12 newton into mm square was given we need to convert it into meter square so it will be into 10 is to minus 6 already 12 was there 12 minus 6 comes out to be 6 so here the final value will be 13 into 10 is to 6 newton into meter square we will be substituting this value here so the answer here comes out to be 58.33 into 10 raised to 6 newton per meter so the ke that is our k equivalency comes out to be 58.33 into 10 raised to 6 newton per meter now after finding k the next step will be to find the value of m because we need to find natural frequency a natural frequency is f the equation for it will be 1 by 2 pi under root ke by m we already identified to find this value ke now we'll be focusing on this value that is m and m equal to w by g w is already given in question that is 5 15 into 10 is to 6 so 15 into 10 is to 6 divided by 9.81 that comes out to be 5.096 into 10 is to 6 kg this is the mass that we will be dealing upon so now substituting the value of k and m in this equation that is equation of natural frequency the answer here comes out to be 0.538 cycles per second or hertz so this is a final answer that is natural frequency but whenever natural frequency is asked in your examination you always need to find time period of it it would be mentioned in the question it is subsequent to this so you all uh, obviously have to find the values of time period after finding the value of frequency so the time period will be t equal to 1 by f you just need to divide it by 1 clear so here the value will be 1 upon 0.538 that comes out to be 1.858 seconds so our final answer is completed you always need to find this that is natural frequency and the time period so this was our second numerical moving across coming to our third numerical of today the question here is calculate the natural frequency and time period for a system given below here e e specified here that is modulus of elasticity is given as 2 into 10 to 4 newton per mm square and this is the system that is given previously it was uh, given of two column system here it is a three column system but here support a and support f is given as hinge support in the previous the numerical both are supports a and d were fixed here d is fixed that is intermediate support is fixed but a and f are given as 
this that is our hinge support here all three columns are parallel to each other so the keq will be equal to kb plus kcd plus kef clear so this will be our, how i will be solving it and this is the cross section area that is given cross section of ba or you can say ab is 400 cross 400 mm square cross section of cd is 500 cross 500 and cross section of ef is again 400 cross 400 so this ab and ef can be solved similar to each other now mass of rigid beam here keep in mind the value of udl is given so whenever the value of udl is given we need to find the mass value of it so mass will be equal to w into g so w will be equal to load into span so load is given as 20 and it is given in kilonewton so converting into newton it comes out to be 20 into 10 is to 3 BC is 4 meter, CE is 4 meter. So the total span will be 8 meter. So here it is given as 8. So this will be our total weight. That is 20 to 10 is to 3 into 8 divided by G. That is 9.81. Answer comes out to be 16,309.88 kg. And now after finding this mass, we will be finding K. But for K, first we need the value of E. E is given in question. I that is inertia is not given. But for that, this cross section is given. So first, we will be finding moment of inertia. So the moment of inertia of column AB and moment of inertia of column EF will be the same because it is having the same cross section area. So I AB equal to I EF equal to BD cube by 12. Clear? Here it will be BD cube by 12 for a rectangular section, as you can say, or a square section. It will be BD cube by 12. So here, I A B equal to I F comes out to be 2.133 into 10 is to 9 mm is to 4, and I C D similarly comes out to be 5.208 into 10 is to 9. Clear? Now we will be finding the value of K. So here K E will be equal to here. Keep in mind this support is now hinge. So for hinge support, the values of deflection will be 3 E I by L Q. Again E F is hinge. So again E F portion will be 3 E I by L Q. And the center portion is fixed, so it will be 12 EI by L cube. Clear? So this will be our equivalent stiffness for all the three columns. As though all the three columns are parallel, the final equation will be summation of all three cases. So here solving it, this values and this value, length of both the columns is same. So we can mention 2 into this AB value. So here EI, E was 2 into 10 is to 4, and I we have already calculated for AB and EF to be 2.133 into 10 is to 9. So solving it, we are getting answer five five seven seven three point three three into ten raised to three newton per meter. You always need to uh, keep your final answer in newton per meter while solving it. Clear? So now we will be finding the value of omega. Omega is natural angular frequency. Keep in mind, if it is asked natural frequency, natural frequency is small f. But whenever it is asked natural angular frequency, it is omega. So omega here is under root k by m. Ke we already identified it, and we have also identified it. So the answer here comes out to be 58.47 radian per second. Well, look, omega that is angular frequency. So angular frequency will not be in cycles per second; it will be in radian per second. Whereas natural frequency that is f, the equation is 1 upon 2 pi under root k by m. This under root k by m is nothing but omega. So 1 upon 2 pi into omega. That comes out to be 9.306 cycles per second, or you can say hertz. But keep in mind, this answer is not yet completed. Whenever you are asked to find natural frequency, you always need subsequently need to find the time period. So time period will be 1 upon f, which will be 1 upon this. That is 9.306. That comes out to be 0.107 seconds. And this is our final answer now. Clear? So we have seen three numerical in today's session. This will be your exercise problem. Do solve it because we have started with the numerical part. Practice will be keeping you in touch with the numericals that we do in the regular scenarios and regular sessions. We will be seeing further more numericals in the next session. Thank you.